Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, Thursday, uh, May 18th. And yes, Ball Cap Bible Study. We got, we got classic American Mickey uh, today. Um, I'm, my only opinion piece is not, this isn't the new uh, woke Mickey. It's uh, the good old Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney would probably be spinning in his grave today. All right, that's enough of that. Well, here we are, Ball Cap Bible Study, going through Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we're wrapping up uh, chapter six today. Uh, the The irony is that it is the uh, cure for anxiety section and uh, a lot of stuff that uh, delayed this this week. Uh, Monday, it was uh, raining crazy cats and dogs. Our um, air conditioner has gone out on our first floor, so uh, we're waiting on a new one to come in. That's going to be well, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. That always gives you a little anxiety. You know what the praise is, though? Um, we don't have to take a loan. We the Lord has blessed us, and we have the money to pay cash for it. I, I, it's it's hard for me to give up ten thousand dollars in one shot, but uh, that's just you know that's called life. Um, so then we've got that going on. And Tuesday was uh, just the one of the busiest days of my nine year career as the pastor for senior adults. I mean, it was busy. And then, um, uh, it was started to do everything Wednesday and Wednesday morning, our internet goes out and this requires, uh, some internet options just to record on zoom. It has to connect. It's a long story, but anyway, so I was up last night, um, till about 11, uh, 10 30 or 11 getting uh the new router uh installed i would have done it sooner but tommy and Bree are in town and so we were at my parents with them until uh nine or ten last night so anyway here we are fine it's thursday we made it uh so here i am in the den and um yeah and then and then if you know about my dad just keep praying for him uh, as he walks through his cancer battle and uh he's he's going to another doctor today uh, this was the chemo doctor. Yesterday was the radiation doctor. And so they're working out some next steps and some treatment plans. And, uh, but all that will, that tends to give you some anxiety, doesn't it? Uh, you have a lot going on. And then also um, had three folks pass away. So I'm involved in all those uh, funerals and viewings over the next five, six days. So um, yeah, anxiety, it's, it's real. Um, the, the challenge we have is is how do we uh, deal with it? You know, anxiety comes from adversity and ad adversity, you've heard me say this before, adversity is always going to be that opportunity to respond in a way that honors God. Anybody can respond the way the world would. Anybody can go, oh, I can't believe this is happening to me, you know, and get all mad and stuff. But, um, you know, what what honors God? What behavior, what actions, what, what uh, coping skill, you know, will honor the Lord. So it, as we wrap up chapter six, you know, chapter five, that first Sermon on the Mount was was that paradigm shift. Uh, you have heard, but I say the Beatitudes, all these things that on the surface don't make sense. But then when you drill down, you see the, the theology behind it and the fact that, um, you know, murder and lust and all that stuff begin in the heart. Not It's not a work of the hands. It's a work of the heart. Uh, quite frankly, everything is begins in the heart. Uh, so then we get into, so you have all that stuff, how to deal with people, how to, how to rightly approach God, how to pray, all those things. Then we get into uh, the different ways that we approach God, that we deal with God. You know, Jesus talked about how to give, how to pray, how to fast, um, you know, how to how to deal with um, things, material things, uh, in a way that that God would want or that would please Him. So now we're on the cure for anxiety. Here we go. The cure for anxiety. So I'm I'm reading out of the uh, H. So HCSB. Um, my son, when he was in youth group, said it uh, stood for Hardcore Southern Baptist. So we'll we'll have a, a fun time reading this. But I want you to pause for a minute and think about what gives you anxiety. What what gives you heartburn? What what grinds your gears 
you know, as the Cowboys say, what, what chaps your hide, what kind of things upset you that really shouldn't, you know, ex external forces. I get frustrated at myself for doing dumb things and making bad decisions, but how do you, how do you deal with the things you can't control outside of your decision matrix? The, the, uh, like I say, those external forces and those, those factors, those things that weigh on you that I think a lot of anxiety comes from the fact that, you know, we, we don't have a grip on it. We, it's not under our control. Uh, you, you've heard of control freaks. Uh, they, they tend to have a lot of anxiety. God doesn't want that, you know, stress causes disease and brings down your immune system and all sorts of stuff. And God wants you to be happy, not happy. Like Joel Osteen describes, not, not that theology of prosperity stuff, not nowhere in the Bible. Does it indicate if, if you're not healthy and wealthy and all that, that there's some sin in your life blocking your access to that. That's not, look at the widow's might. She was poor, but yet um, pointed out um, among all. So here we go. The cure for anxiety. Are you ready? Do, do you want, you want, you want to know what that is? This is that seek ye first, the kingdom of God section. Listen to this. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Now, understand the audience in the historical context. This is a little bit hard for us as Americans. Uh, most of us don't worry about, I mean, you see the number of hats I have. Uh, you know, nobody hardly worries about what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, what where their next you know, meal comes from, um, their, their health is a concern. Yes. But not like you got things falling off of you like they did back then 2000 years ago, it was way different, but at the same time, we worry about things like, like the future, you know, it, Garth Brooks, you know, if tomorrow never comes that kind of stuff. So just think about those things, you know, what do we worry about? Our kids, our grandchildren. Uh, some people worry about their their IRA, their savings account. What's you know is is this nation going in the wrong direction? Will I have anything left to retire on? That kind of stuff. All right. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or gather in the barns, yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Absolutely. You are worth so much more and I am worth so much more. God provides. He takes care of us. Now, it doesn't mean we sit in a field and wait for the ravens to come feed us like, you know, we've read about in the Old Testament, but he gave, he gave you abilities. And one ability he gave you was to seek him and go to him and not worry about things. If the birds don't have to worry and, and they're out, you know, they're, they're constantly just eating. And so um, can, listen to this, can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? You can't. You can't grow one inch, one foot by worrying. It does, quite frankly, the opposite. Worrying will shrink a person mentally, spiritually, effectively. Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by wearing? And why do you worry about clothes? Now, again, this is a little tough for us. We don't worry. You know what we worry about? We worry about what people think. Do they think these clothes look good on me? They were worrying about, you know, what do I have to wear? We look in a closet full of stuff and go, I don't have a thing to wear. They really didn't have a thing to wear. They were struggling. They were scraping by. It's been a long time since most of us have had to scrape by. You remember what it was like, but you know, the, here's the blessing. Here's the praise. And sometimes we don't stop and think about this. I remember when Rachel and I first got married, we couldn't even go to the store unless it was double coupon day. Now we don't even really look at the prices. If we need it, we get it. Um, and that's a blessing. That's 
that takes away anxiety when you don't have to use a calculator when you're at the store. So he says, and why do you worry about your clothes? Learn how the wildflowers of the field grow, the lilies of the field. They do not labor or spin. They do not toil or spin. Uh, you've heard it that way. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more for you, O oh, you of little faith. So don't worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Here we go, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first, first, that's, he's, he's saying prioritize what you seek, what you pursue, what you go after. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the king, heavenly things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. A lot of people want to seek the kingdom of God, but they don't give a flip about righteousness. They don't mind being unrighteous, cheating on their taxes, uh, treating people badly, stomping them down, you know, elevating themselves on, on the pile of people they've stepped on, all sorts of things. You know what I'm saying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, you, there, there's a website called Ministry Watch, and you look all the time at all of these so-called ministers that, that crash and burn because they 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 thought they were seeking some kind of kingdom of God, but they were not doing anything in a righteous way. They were not moral. They were not righteous. They were not holy. Uh, you know, we're all sinners, but man, th they were intentional. Go, go to ministrywatch.com sometime and, and check them out. Um, but fair warning, it is sad. All right, so... That seek seek ye first the righteous or seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But here's the thing, you know, there's an old saying that God will give you your needs but not your wants, and I disagree with that. And that's not entering into the theology of prosperity. When you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then you get your wants too. You know, if you ask in the name of God, you get the desires of your heart. When, here, here's the caveat, when your desires align with God's desires, when your wants are what God wants, boom, there they are. When, when, when your way, when your life and lifestyle align with God's way, uh, you know, there's a, there's a cute little show on now where their tagline is, this is the way, but when, when your wants are God's wants, when what you want, what you desire is what God desires, he will over, that's when your cup runneth over. Trust me, you get way more than you can even handle. Um, I have more than I can handle. When I want to serve God, you know, with all of my heart, he gives me too much to do, I promise you. But seek ye first, it's about priorities. Don't worry about the other stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. It will be a tsunami of stuff. And you're like, whoa, 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 time out. Hang on. I, this is more than I can handle. But then my favorite, this is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. The chapter six wraps up this way. You can see I'm not even, I've got, I've got these last two memorized. And then, so he, he, he starts off with, don't worry about all this other stuff, you know, what you'll wear, what you'll eat, what you'll, you know, uh, how much, he doesn't say this, but how much oil is in your lamp. And then he wraps up with the final worry, the future. Do not worry. I love the King James Version. It says this, do not worry for the morrow or tomorrow. Do not worry for the morrow. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. There's enough going on today that you have to deal with. Don't worry about tomorrow. And here's the thing. This is, this is a, a doctrine or a theology. 
Now, it doesn't say don't prepare for the future, does it? It, you know, God wants you to prepare for the future, but live day to day. Take care of today. You know, there had a saying when I worked with college students, and I'll close with this. I used to work with college students, and they would come up to me all the time. You know, it was it was different kids every year, but it was the same question. Oh, I, I don't know what God's will is for my life. They worried about the future and tomorrow. You know, I, I don't know what God's will for my life is. I, I don't know, you know, what he wants me to major in, my career field, who he wants me to date, marry, you know, all those things, all those things that were, you know, future casting uh, and forecasting and all those things. And we came up with this saying, are you ready? I don't have a clue what God has planned for you in the future, but I know this. If you're not doing what he wants you to do today, you'll never get to tomorrow. Does that make sense? If you're not doing what he wants you to do, because because you'll you'll not do it the next day either. If you're not doing it today, tomorrow becomes today. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow will be today in the future. So if you're not doing, you know, his will daily, give us this day our daily bread, that kind of thing. If If you're not taking care of business today, if you're not honoring God today, you won't get to tomorrow. And so then you don't get to the next day and you don't get down the road in a way that honors God in a way that pleases him in the way he wants you to live. And then, you know, because you're not seeking first his kingdom and, and, and being righteous as you do that. So if you're not righteous today, when are you going to be righteous? Don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient for today is the evil thereof. Take care of today in that righteous way as you seek the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be added unto you. You, In other words, especially the removal of that beam of anxiety. You will, when, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then you could face adversity in a way that honors God. I don't know what he has planned for you in the future, but you will never get there if you're not doing what he wants you to do today. All right, that's it. Love you guys. Uh, be anxious for nothing is what the Bible says, uh, but in all things, acknowledge him. All right, love you. Have a great week.